Trading Nut, episode 111. So first of all, you, you, you have to backtest. Backtest a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And the more you can backtest, the, the better you will get. The market's going to do something. Your job is not to fight it. The market never, ever runs away. It's always there. That personal diary of trading will make you a much better trader than... I could be right about the direction, but wrong about the trade. Don't focus on the monetary side. Trying to make too much money on a trade is what I have seen killed every trader. Your losses offer you some of the greatest insight you can find into your mistakes. Relax. Learn the process. Candlestick pattern training is a freaking trap. Don't be in a rush to become a millionaire. Let the market tell you what the market wants to tell you. This podcast is not financial, trading, or investing advice of any kind. What's up, traders? Welcome to another installment of the Trading Up Podcast. I'm your host, Cam Hawkins, and today we've got Richard Nasser on the show. Now, if you don't know who Richard is, he is one of the top authors on TradingView, and there's a reason he's one of the top authors. You're going to find that out in a second. Uh, he also worked for a Forex broker. He also uh, worked in a hedge fund trading uh, over six figures, and he's also now an independent trader. So he's left the hedge fund. He's doing his own thing. You guys are going to get to hear all of that in this com- upcoming show in just a second. And the reason he is number one, or not number one, he's one of the top authors. He may or may sort of hover in between number one and, and number five. But the reason he's up there on TradingView is because of his chart walkthroughs. Man, we shot a video after this. And it was unreal. He absolutely nailed it. Probably the best technical analysis walkthrough I've ever seen on the show. Guys, you've got to go and check that out after listening to the show. Um, do bear in mind that English is not his first language. He's from Lebanon, Beirut and Lebanon. And uh, like this isn't his natural thing doing a podcast. The chart walkthrough was natural. Uh, the podcast wasn't. But... I didn't notice anything, and I'm sure you guys won't either, but bear that in mind when you're listening. All right, guys, so we've also got they've got the Forex Simulator Challenge up and running, Trader versus Trader. We're into episode two of season two. Uh, that's just about to come up. For me, it's going to be tomorrow. For you, it's going to be who knows when. Uh, it's probably already happened. Uh, we've also got the independent Forex Simulator Challenges between uh, where past guests are just having a go at it, seeing if they can... Uh, Basically, get a good score on the Forex Simulator Challenge. So far, the top score is over 5%. And we also have a guest versus guest, which I'm hoping to kick off this week. Uh, I've just seen a message pop up on my phone. We might be able to make that happen. So this is where I'm getting past guests of the show to compete against each other and see if they can beat another guest. Um, So guys, if you don't prefer manually backtesting and want to do stuff a little quicker or a lot quicker, then I do teach you how to build trading robots. So if that's something that interests you, then check out my Robot Builders Club. I've had guys come through that who are licensing what they built to to funds, such as my sponsor, Nathan Sage, who's there now being able to sponsor my show. He's come on, listened to the show, taken the course, built something fantastic, and is now able to sponsor the show. How crazy is that? Also, you've got guys who are, who are looking to use the trading robots they create to get funded from the likes of my sponsor, City Traders Imperium. And also, like even just last episode, two episodes ago, sorry, we had uh, one of my ex-students who'd managed to place in the Forex World Cup. So guys, there's a whole lot of reasons to take a look at my, look at my Robot Builders Club and see if it's right for you. All right, folks, without further ado, let's get on with this fantastic episode with Richard Nasser. Whether you're a struggling trader or a profitable trader, our sponsor, City Traders Imperium, are offering you the chance to become a fully backed Forex trader. That's right, get coached and funded with CTI today. All right, folks, here we are on Trading Up. We've got Richard Nasser here on the show, all the way from Lebanon, my first guest from Lebanon. How are things uh, with you, uh, Richard? Yes, Cam. Hello. How are you? Hope you're doing fine. First of all, I want to thank you for having me. I'm very, very happy to, to be here. Awesome stuff. Well, look, um, guys, so Richard's actually from Beirut. So, I mean, I did ask him before the show how, how things were going over there after the big explosions. And um, it sounds like it's, it's still pretty tough. Is that right? Yes, right, right. Yeah, so, so um, uh, you know, we're lucky to get him on the show here, and uh, luckily enough, he, was, he, missed, he wasn't in the city at the time of these explosions, but um, I know that you had some sort of disastrous stories, which we won't go into here in the show, but um, yeah, like, you know, thoughts are sort of out, out there with you. 
Um, and guys, do bear in mind that you know English is not Richard's first language. So, <laughs> right. um, so we're going to do our best here on the show to 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 make it as seamless as possible. But this guy's got a hell of a lot of experience and has got um, some great reputation out there. So, number one author on Trading View, I think we've had like the number twenty four. Or ranked twenty fourth on Trading View, which was a uh, Akil Stokes. But we haven't had a number one author. So if you go by week and go by month on uh, Trading View, you'll see Richard there uh, at the Signalist, and um, so he's got a great reputation there. And not just that, his story goes all the way through the brokerage firms, hedge funds, and starts off with the struggling trader that we all know and love. Um, so Richard, do you want to start off by uh, yeah telling us your journey? How did you get into into trading and uh, get to where you are now. Yes, yes, sure, Cam. First of all, I want I want to thank you again, and I want to say hello to everyone, wishing you a wonderful uh, day. And and, uh, and as Cam mentioned, my English is my first language, uh, so I'm I, I'm sorry and advanced, and I will try to keep it as uh, slow as possible. Okay. And uh, well, I started just like anyone because of the hype that I can make a lot of money in a very short period of time, right? So first, uh, I first learned about Forex in 2012 from from a TV ad. Uh, It it was right after I finished my bachelor's degree in computer science. So I got I got really, really excited that I want to make money. And and I made my, my first deposit in the first day. And at that time, I knew literally nothing. I just knew how to buy and sell. So I started with 1K, uh, made, made it up to 5K in like three weeks, and then it went back in eight, to $800 in just, uh, in just two days. So, so I did withdraw that remaining 800 bucks, and I made a promise that I will not deposit again until I, I learn how to trade the proper way. So I tried just, just like uh, everyone, I guess, I tried every indicator and bought many, 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 many courses. Sorry, but, but I didn't find myself as a trader. So I decided to stop searching online, right, and focus on what I, I know for, uh, I know so far to come up with my own strategy that that, that suits my time, expectation, uh, uh, and of course my, my skills so far. Uh, and uh, and yes, uh, 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 sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, and and as Cam mentioned, in 2015, I worked as a senior technical technical analyst for a local forex broker. Then in 2017, I worked for 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 for, for a private fund management firm. Then uh, in 2018, I quit my job uh, to 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 become a full time to, to to become a full time trader. Uh, and yes, th- th- that's basically my story. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great little story. I mean, that we can all sort of relate to the first part of it, um, yeah. and so I suppose my, what the the gray bit in here that I I don't have an answer for from listening to you is yes. what happened when you started at the forex brokerage firm. Were you profitable then? Yes, sure. Uh, starting two thousand and fifteen, uh, so I, I, I started to make some profits. So, 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 so I, I knew a, f- a friend that, that knew a friend, right? And, and, and he told me, look, my friend is st- starting a forex broker, and, and, and he wants guys like you to, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, <laughs> I'll say it in English, uh, uh, to, 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 to make analysis, right? For, ah, for, yeah. for, 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 for their users, for their members. So, so I said, why not? Okay, so starting from 2015, I, I, I worked of, of what I do best, right? Since I spent three years learning and backtesting and, and so on. So, so, I, so I, I, I was trending on my personal account. And, uh, and, and what's good is that I'm not withdrawing from my account. So my account is growing and growing. And, uh, 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 and since I have, a, I have a day job, I was saving and saving. And that's why I kept on saving from 2015 to 2018, I kept on saving money. So, so that's why on 2018, I was able to, 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 to quit my job. And, and, and I know that I already have some savings. So I'm not, I, I'm not, I, I, I'm not obliged to, to, to withdraw from my, my account. And, and of course, 
and of course in this way i i don't i don't, don't get emotional because i'm not depending on, on my training account uh to live righty ho so so let's jump back even further and, and ask you a bit more about your journey to get to that point where you know things started clicking for you and um i mean did you once you deposited again because you said you weren't going to deposit again until exactly you worked okay so so that second deposit when did that happen and can you remember what happened after yes, after yes, it exactly uh, uh and, and 2015 let's say end of 2014 beginning of 2015 uh, that's where i made my first deposit because i was learning for like like two years and back testing and then i spent for, for like six months on a demo account right because i i, I always like to to test on a demo account for at least uh, six months. Uh, and then I found that, yes, I'm, um, my, my trading strategy is, is, is very good and is, is, getting, uh, is getting good results. And, and of course, I, I had some losses, I had some wins, but overall, in this entire period of six months, uh, the, 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 the results are very, very good. Then I said, yes, now I have the confidence to, 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 uh, to, to, to deposit real money again. And what, what kind of strategy were you using at that point? I mean, if you had to describe your, your technical analysis, what, what did it look like? Just jumping in here with a quick message from my sponsor, Sage Capital, who provide education, software, and tools needed to increase anyone's ability to trade more successfully. Perfect for people who are either still learning, too busy, or just want to use professional-grade strategies to build passive income. They've achieved high returns with relatively low risk and are available for auto-copying today. Go to sagecapital.co.uk and start auto-trading today. Yes, uh, so, so basically I'm a swing trader. Uh, so I start with the weekly and, and daily time frames to, to, to know where I am in the market. So on daily, on weekly time frames, uh, I, I, I do market structure analysis and I identify the key rejection zones like uh, support and resistance, uh, su- supply and demand. And then I zoom into lower time frames like H4, like H4, H1, or even N30 time frame to look for setups around these key rejection zones from daily and weekly. And is that what you've been doing ever since? Have you changed that or no, tweaked no, it no. or evolved? Yeah, yes, sure, sure. I, I've, I've, uh, of course, we always tweak our our style to 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 minimize the losses and maximize the wins. But but uh, but yeah, yes, basically that's it. From 2015 till till today, I'm still using uh, I'm still using the same basic strategy. Cool, awesome stuff. So, um, can you tell us what it was like working for the hedge fund? Uh, it was a very tough, but uh, a very tough, but but good experience. Because first of all, uh, I'm I'm not used to to handle this uh, uh, this much money, right? So I, I for, for my personal account, I was trading with, with like five five k, six k, eight k, and then I worked for a fund management company, and I had I, I I was responsible for a three hundred k account. So, right. so yes, it was a good experience. And, and and of course I I I, I was getting a, 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 I was getting a, a big salary and of course I, at the end of the year I get commission for 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 for, for the profit I have for for this three three hundred k dollars but but of course I, I I was very very picky in choosing my trades because I know that if I'm entering a trade it will be entered on a three a three uh, on a three hundred k account. Uh, and and exactly then where 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 I learned to be picky and only on only choose the best the best of, of the best setups, and and, and of, of course there uh, there I learned a lot f- from from them how to focus on on risk management, right? For, for I I'll give you an example. So f- for example, we we don't hold uh, uh, and and I'm still doing it for now. I don't hold more than two instruments. Uh, for, for example, if I'm holding uh, EURUSD and EURUJPY, then then then, then I, I, I should I should not hold I should not enter more euro, right? I, I can still enter one USD and one JPY since I'm, tra- I'm, I'm I entered EURUSD and EURUJPY, so we have the euro in common. So we have two euros, and we don't have to we don't we shouldn't enter more euro, 
and now we can ant still enter one USD, one JPY, and of course we can enter two CAD, two, two GPP, and so on. Right. Okay. So, so uh, I mean, what was the main? I mean, that's what you obviously did, but what was the main sort of psychological barrier that you had to overcome when you were doing such large accounts? Or jumping from like five uh, k to three hundred k, like what mindset yeah. things did you struggle with? Uh, look, I, I struggled a lot with uh, with uh, as I mentioned earlier that I when I make a decision, this decision would be transferred to a, to a big account, and this big account is, uh, is is not mine, right? So if I make a loss, then then I would know that. Uh, th that it would result in a huge loss, at, at least a huge, a huge loss for me, right? So, uh, but, uh, uh, but but of, of course, I, I tried I tried my best to, to remain calm and to focus on on, uh, on the trade by itself, and 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 yes, and that's a trick I learned that we shouldn't focus on the money. So let, let's say I have accounts of, of 100K or, or 1K or 5K. I, I should treat it as I have, I have a, 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 no matter which size I have, which account size I have, I have to, to, to enter with a fixed risk per trade. So I personally enter with 1% risk per trade, no matter how, how big my account is. So I don't focus on the, the money by itself. I focus that I'm risking 1% of this balance. Right, awesome stuff, awesome stuff. Now, uh, what about your your trading these days? I mean, do you want to give us some insight into your your trading style? You sort of touched on it before. Um, maybe some of the stats around your trading. How does that look? Sure, sure. Yeah, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I start with the weekly and daily, right? Uh, be, be, because because I I always I always target double my stop loss. Okay, so I, I, I want the market to make a big movement. And for the market to make a big movement, it has to be around a very strong area, right? And, and I, I don't want to, I don't plot uh, or, or draw my support and resistance from H1, for example, because on H1, the market would, would, would reject it maybe, but with a very small movement. I want the rejection to be big. So I enter with a very small stop loss and I, I target at least a, a, a double my stop loss size. And, uh, and regarding entry, uh, and regarding entry, I, I, what traders, what some traders call it late, I, I call it with extra, with, with extra confirmation. For example, if the market is making higher highs, right? And, and of course, I, I, uh, I, I follow certain rules. The market is making higher highs and and higher lows, right? So we are in an uptrend, but it's it's now approaching a resistance area. So I, I don't enter immediately around resistance. And of course, we know that a resistance is not a laser line, but it's a zone. So if I enter a sell immediately, price can still go up, kick, kick me out, and 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 and, uh, and then fall fall again. So I always wait for extra confirmation. And as mentioned, some traders call it late. I always wait for, for the last swing loop to, to, to be broken downward. So because we are in a bullish trend, so now the bulls are in control. So I want the bears to take over, and, and the bears would take over by, by breaking be, be, uh, below the previous low. So when the previous low is broken, is broken downward, I, I can enter a cell, and, and my stop loss would be, would, would, would be just above the last high. Right, because now since I'm entering a cell, I'm speculating that the market should now start to make lower lows and lower highs. Right, so if I'm entering a cell, I'm speculating a, a bearish trend. So if price will now go up again and make a higher high, then I know that this one is a fake out. So, so price just broke the previous low just to get more liquidity to, to be able to continue trading higher. In this case, my stop loss would be there, just above the last high, in, in case the bulls uh, take control again. And so, so in this case, uh, it, it will kick me out on stop loss, and then I, 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 will try to find, uh, I will try to find new opportunities. And what about, like, so you mentioned there you, you do a two-to-one risk to reward, so yes. you take twice the, the, the risk. What about your win rate? Is that above 50% yes. or yes. below? Exactly, exactly. Yes, my, my, my win rate is, uh, is a minimum of 50%. Okay. So, 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 so sometimes I get like 60, 70%, and, 
and, and, and you know sometimes when the market is uh, is tough I, I i i get like 40 percent but but yes we can see on average well, i have like like a 50 60 percent win rate and and what about uh the number of trades that you're taking in a week great uh i um uh, but I, I personally answer, you know, it depends on the market con- conditions. So if the market is standing, is re- ranging, it depends. But on average, uh, uh, on average, I, I enter like three, three to five trades per week, sometimes more uh, or sometimes less. Uh, and uh, and since I'm a swing trader, I, I, I do my analysis on all 28 Forex pairs and gold. Okay, so on, on over the weekend, I do my analysis and uh, and and this is what i call the, the weekly overview right so uh, so over the weekends i spent like four or five hours uh, on, on, uh, when the market is closed to prepare my next week and and on the weekend every week i split these 28 pairs into three lists cold warm and hot okay so the the, the cold ones are the ones that are still far away from, from from support and resistance or supply and demand and so on okay so uh so so these ones i'm sure that i may not get an opportunity next week so so th- this is why this list is called cold and then we we, ha- we have the warm list the, the 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 warm pairs are the ones that are approaching a, a key rejection area from from daily and weekly of course and, uh, and 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 of course we still have the hot. The hot are the ones where it's already there. It's already around resistance, for example. And 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 we have a setup forming, but but I'm still waiting for for for, for my trigger to enter. Right, right, right. Okay, cool. All right. So, twenty eight pairs, three to five a week. Um, that all sounds very mechanical. Weekend analysis. I mean, uh, I suppose. How many trades of these are running at the same time when you're, you know, say three to five a week? Are they all, yes. you know, you get three or five running at the same time or are you entering some on a Friday and they're running across the weekend? How does that play out? Great. Uh, so uh, as I mentioned first, I, I, if I guess the first question, uh, I, I learned from the fund management firm that I only should hold a maximum uh, a maximum two instruments uh, that that having uh, ha, 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 that that have the same currency. So, for for example, if I have like five opportunities and and I ha, like I have three GPP pairs. So, for example, GPP USD, GPP GPY, and GPP CAD. I I only pick two. Okay, and uh, and and for example, if I have GPP USD, GPP GPY, and GPP CAD, I enter GPP USD and GPP GPY. I don't end the GBP card, and I try to find, uh, find try to find other opportunities on on card. So, for example, if I have Euro card, then then yes, I, I can enter Euro card be, because I don't have card and, and I don't have Euro, right? So I I try, I try to manage my my, my accounts in uh, in a way that I'm not ex- exposed to too much to, uh, to to for example Euro or, or, or USD or, or any specific pair. So, so yes, m- maybe I, I may I, I may be holding four pairs at the same time, but but I but I would be holding, for example, GBP card and and and, and Euro JPY and 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 for example, and the So, so so uh, uh, um, how to say it? <laughs> so uh, and, and, and in this case, even if we have news on on Euro JPY, maybe it will kick me out on uh, stop loss but but i can still have uh, the two, two other pairs that are not affected uh, w- with the news so yes on average on th- th- three to five uh, trades and yes I, I don't mind holding all these trades at the same time because as mentioned i i, I don't I, I, they aren't dependent uh, they aren't dependent on on one single on one single, uh, uh, on, on, on one single uh, pair and were there any other sort of funny or, or different kind of rules that the hedge funds had that you thought, you know, oh, I hadn't, this hadn't crossed my mind when I was trading as a retail trader? Yes, nice. Um, exactly. They, they, always, they always try to, to get more liquidity, right? So, yes, we, you, 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 some traders think that we have a resistance here. And the resistance 
is not a laser line. That's what I always say. It's a big zone, a very, very big zone. So we should look. That's why I enter with extra confirmation. And yes, some traders uh, uh, think I'm late. But why? Because I want to get that extra confirmation. So what, what, what you exactly see, and, and, and of course, what, what other traders call uh, uh, stop plus hunting uh, and, and so on. Right, so they try to get get more li- uh, more liquidity because they, they can't they can't enter all their, their trades in one in one single trade, so they, they try to, to to get more people to sell, right? Uh, let's say around support for for, for, for them to, to, to fill their, 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 their buy limits, so they want to get the price down, to so that many many traders would, would be interested in selling because they think that the support is now broken. And in this case, because it's a zone, they they they, they put their their they put their orders there down down down, and and as price and as traders enter uh, sell orders, they now would would be filling uh, would, would 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 be filling uh, their buys. So so always always wait for price to make that that movement down. In, in case we are talking about support. Right. So all, always wait for that movement, aggressive movement down, like a wick or, 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 or for example, a big candle be, be, before looking to, to enter a buy. Ah, yes. Yeah. I mean, I've heard that sort of in various forms over the years, but it's great yes. to hear it from someone who's actually, you know, been in a hedge fund and, uh, and, and knows what, exactly what they're looking to do. So, okay, great, that's great. Now, now you talked about your um, your typical trading weekend. In the day, what are you doing in the day to, I mean, what does your typical trading day look like? Great. Uh, since since I'm, I'm a swing trader, as I told you, most of the work is not done over the weekend. So I, I, have, I have so much time, uh, I have so much time during the week. And, and uh, uh, during the week, I spend my time code coaching offline and online, and and helping other traders starting out. Um, moreover, I, I, I moreover I have a Telegram group for for my students, where where I where I answer their questions, uh, and 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 they can they can even post uh, their their trades there, and and of course there in the group I I, I post my personal week overview. Uh, for them to learn uh, to, to learn in, in, in a practical way, I, I don't send signals like like enter by now. I, I, I send my view that if price will approach this area and, and, and as per and as per my rules and as per our rules, we'll be looking for this to happen and this to happen for, for, for us to enter a sell or buy. Right. Okay. And so, so okay. So. You, what about entering trades, though? I mean, when are you at, when are you entering the trades? I mean, are you have you got a set time that you go to the chart, or are you using alerts or something like that? Exactly, exactly. Uh, when when uh, let let's say I I have my cold, warm, and hot list. So when I have a hot list, means that the, that the setup is ready, but I'm waiting for the trigger, which you, which you already know that it's it's when the last swing row, for example, around resistance uh, is broken downward. So what I do over the weekend, or or, or, or or even or even I did my charts like like every night I spend like thirty minutes to to, to make a quick updates. For example, if if uh, if, uh, if 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 I have a pair from 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 my, from my warm list and it's currently forming a setup, so I, I will check I will check every day for for like thirty minutes to see if uh, if uh, if if now the uh, uh, Yes, to, to see if, if now the setup is ready as uh, 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 and as per my rules to to put uh, the to, to put the alert, and of course I put the alert just below the last swing blow, right? Because I want to enter when it's broken downward, and I only enter. I, I don't enter immediately. I, I I don't I don't like sell uh, sell stops in this case or buy stop. I, I I I like to execute my trades manually. So why? Because I put this alert just below the previous swing low, and I want the sellers to prove to me, right, right, to that they are strong enough to break and to close below the swing. And I always enter when we have a big candle. What 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 what, what, what I call a momentum candle. 
right? I want a momentum candle to close below this area. So that's why I don't use the, the, the sell stop as price can still go down, make a wick and, and, and trade higher. So it will go down to get more liquidity to, to, to be able to trade higher. No, I want the sellers to prove to me that they are strong enough. They are taking over by, by making a, a, a very big candle. Then and only then I, I would be... Uh, um, uh, uh, yes, and uh, as per my rules, I, I would enter this trade, and as mentioned, we'll stop plus above the last swing high in this case. Right, awesome stuff. Now, um, what do you think? So you obviously started off like the rest of us, struggling uh, to to really make trading work. Now, what do you think made you different from everyone else? Uh, I, I, I will try to 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 answer this question short. Uh, what what made what what made the difference is uh, by not skipping a weekly overview. I, I don't skip a weekly overview, and, and trust me, you, you will see magic. How your trading performance, ability to stop patterns, and, and even the trading wisdom will, will will increase exponentially. I never skipped a weekly overview, not even one. No matter if I'm sick, tired, traveling. And, and and I believe that that uh, that this made all the difference. And how did you come up with the whole weekly over, overview thing? Uh, yes, because first of all, I wanted the market to to be closed, right? That's first of all, and and I really really enjoy it. I, I put some music and 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 I'm, I made I make a, a a big cup of coffee, and I really enjoy it. I spend like three four hours. I want the market to, to be closed. Why? Because I don't want to see movements. I I, I I want to follow my rules. I want to I want to be purely objective. I don't want to, to check the market movements. I just want the market to be closed, so 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 so, so that I can focus on my rules. And and I, I really, as mentioned, enjoy it a lot because I can prepare what what I am looking for. And of course, I I try I I. Um, I have notes, so so I write uh, what what did what did I do wrong last week, and and for and for for the new setups that are forming, I, I will write what I would like to see, right? Uh, uh, mm-hmm. What I would like to see, so so that m- m- my rules are met. So so that that's a very very good habit. B- b- why? Because next week, I'm 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 already prepared. So if the market makes a movement upward, and 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 I just check check my notes if th- th- this is what I would like to see, right? So for example, if the price is approaching a resistance, and and for example, I'm 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 looking for 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 um, uh, I'll I'll show you an, an example in uh, in a bit when when we go over the the video one. Uh, that I, I I would like to see that the the bears or in this case the bulls are are losing momentum, so that's for first of all that's what I want to see so, so that the conditions are met, and uh, and of course, and as as mentioned the sellers will 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 break uh, the the last swing the last uh, load downwards, and that's what I want to see around resistance and if the bulls are breaking the resistance upward. Right, so now, uh, so, so now all the conditions are are not valid anymore, and so in this case, for example, after two, two, two after two or three days, when I do this thirty minutes quick updates, so I, I will write notes that uh, that uh, this uh, what I, I what I did like to see last week d- didn't really happen. So for now, the resistance is broken upward. So of course now it's not now it would be acting as support, uh, and and of course I'm I'm not holding a buy yet. Uh, I I will wait for for price to 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 to, to retest because when resistance is broken, we all know that it it could be potentially become support. But but I will not buy immediately if price tests it. I would wait for for certain certain conditions to be met around the support to 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 in this case to to see that the support is really holding. And in this case, only and only, uh, I will be, I will be, be uh, I will be adding this one to my notes, and I, uh, and of course, I, I will be waiting for it. So, it, it's really, really a good habit to, 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 to be, uh, sorry, to, to be always prepared uh, about what would you like to see, and then what is the, the next movement. And do you think that the so that the stuff you do in the weekend, do you use that 
when you're posting to TradingView? Uh, yes and no. Because on, on TradingView, I, I like to keep it as simple as possible, right? Because I have many, many followers that, that, that I'm, are not used uh, to, uh, uh, to my trading style, right? So, so I, I, will, I will try my best to keep it. And of course, I don't post on, only, I, I, I don't, don't post only pictures. I, I, I always post videos for like five or 10 minutes because I want, I want the followers to 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 uh, as mentioned before I, I don't like to give signals so i want the followers to know what i'm looking for and why right so so i i want the followers to know that uh, what what should be done if this happens and what should be done if this happens and of course uh, if if uh, for example, if price breaks uh, this swing high upward, they, they, they already know what to do. And as I always say, they have to be in full, full control of their account. So they, they, have, to, 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 they, they have to to make the decisions uh, them uh, and be in full control of their account. And, um, and, and yes, th- I'll try to make it as simple as possible. Do you think that um, the reason that you, you know, rank so highly in, in the... What do you think the reason is that you rank so highly on TradingView? Because they are very simple, right? I've, I've uh, and honestly, I've spent so much time on TradingView, and I, I personally, back in 2014, 15, 16, I, 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 I was following many, 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 many traders, and sometimes I, I think that maybe this trader is smart. Right, but 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 this this chart is uh, is not clear. Right, oh. so I try my best to, to keep it as simple as uh, as possible, uh, and 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 of course, basically, since since my approach is very simple. And and I, and I suppose the uh, I mean, is it, I, I, the reason I asked was I was trying to work out whether or not it had anything to do with. The fact that you, what you were saying on the chart was happening more often than not, like you were getting things right, yes. is that also yes. a factor? Yes, yes, sure, sure. <laughs> yes, of course, because because even if my if my answer is simple and 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 they are they are whole, oh yeah, they are all hitting stop plus, then then no one will follow me. <laughs> okay. <right? laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. That, that's interesting. Now, um, so what about somebody working a day job? Uh, like you were doing, obviously, back in the day. I mean, what do you recommend? What steps would you recommend they take to start earning income as a trader? Nice. Uh, so the, the, just focus on swing trading. So don't, don't try to, to be a scalper. Don't, don't try to be a day trader. I, I, I know many, many traders who, who have a day job. And, and and then they go home and they will try to, and they will try to, to trade for, for like one hour. Right, so I, I I I I don't recommend that you put a certain a certain time per day to to make the trades because sometimes you you will open your charts and you, and you will not find the, the new opportunities, and in this case, and in, in this case you 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 will start to force trades, so I I would recommend for for traders who 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 have a day job to focus on swing trading. The, the, this way you 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 will remain calm. Because of course the swing trades will will last for for like three four days or even one or, or two weeks. It depends on the market movements. But in this way you you would be calm and and of course you 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 will you will you will focus on the long long term picture and not make and not make da- daily income. And and especially that, uh, especially that in swing trading. Uh, m- most of the work uh, is, is, done, is done over the weekend. So over the weekend, you will have time, right? You have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You, you, you can still manage to have some, some time where, where you are free to, to make your, your weekly analysis. And, and, and as mentioned, you, you just split your, you just split your, uh, split your pairs into three lists, and, and, and you can only focus on the hot ones. You, you, you put your alerts, and then when, when, when you go back home, for example, no matter at, at what time, Let's say you, you finish your job at 5, 6 p.m. You get back home. You are tired. You take a rest. You, 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 you eat, and then you can, so you can dedicate like 30 minutes per day to, to make the quick updates. 
nice. It's a nice little step-by-step approach, guys. And I've heard that, or similar to that, in the past. And mm-hmm. I think, yeah, maybe if you sort of combine that with Richard's uh, trading view accounts, or go and have a look at what he does over there, and and have a think about, you know, should you be doing swing trading, especially if you're working a full-time day job, which is pretty busy. It's a great little approach. Now, um, thinking about a price chart, what three things would you recommend uh, the guys out there listening head away and educate themselves on? Nice. Uh, uh, Support and resistance, uh, one. Two, uh, two, chart patterns and, uh, and diversions. So the support and resistance, as mentioned from my trading style, from higher time frames to, to, to give you a bias, to to uh, uh, because there, there you know where we stand in the market, so you have to 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 practice support and resistance and of course and, and, and of course supply and demand. So uh, from from these two, you can know if you are currently approaching a resistance, you have to be looking for sell setups, right? Unless mm. the price will, will break it upward. In this case, it would can become as a potential support. But but at least you, you you know if you are currently around support and resistance. So that's from daily and weekly. Then for diversions, the diversions are uh, is a very good tool to give you an early alert, right? Uh, 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 some traders use diversions to, to enter immediately, right? I, I personally use it to give you an early alert that, that a potential reversal uh, is coming, right? So if price is going up, it's, it's approaching a resistance, right? And 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 and, and we have a divergence forming. Right means that the price is going up, but it's not going up with the momentum it was going up before. Right, so the divergence will give you a clue that now you should start to look for sell setups, and of course the the, the, the chart patterns, trend lines, double tops, and so on. Uh, you, you will use these ones for, for, for triggers. So three spawn resistance to to look for buy and sell setups around. The divergence give you an early alert, and the chart patterns to to, to look for triggers. And what do you use for divergence? Yes, nice. Um, m- m- many traders use use RSI, C- C- CCI, right? RSI, CCI, yeah. and many, 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 many other uh, indicators. Uh, I, 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 I personally use MACD because MACD is very calm. And, and, and when it comes to trading, I'm very calm. Yes, maybe you, you, you find me now excited, uh, but, but when it comes to trading, I'm very, very calm. So M- M- MACD uh, is, is a very good tool to, to, to spot the diversions uh, be, 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 because, first of all, you, you don't see many, many diversions, right? On RSI, you, uh, on every single movement, you, you, you will see that we have a, uh, that we have a, a diversion, 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 and you see the price is, is continue trading higher. While on MACD, uh, uh, what, what I personally do uh, uh, which, which is also late. <laughs> Many traders will call me late. Uh, what I also do is that I, I would wait. For example, if price is going up, I'm comparing the highs, right, to see if we have a divergence. If price is making higher high, while MACD is making lower highs, then we have a divergence. But what I would like to see, for example, if on, on, on MACD, I, I would like the I would like the signal line, right, on, on MT4 and the trading view, you can see it in blue. I would like to see that that blue line to to to, to cross below the, the zero line. So I don't consider that we have a divergence. We have a divergence forming maybe, but it not, it's not confirmed until the sorry uh, 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 sorry uh, until the uh, blue line crosses the zero line. So it would give me extra confirmation, and of course it uh, it will it will minimize the number of, of false divergence. Righty ho, cool guys. Probably worthwhile going and, and having a bit of a play with that to to get your head around it. Now, um, thinking about a trader's mindset, I mean, do you have any special techniques you can share with us? Um, yes, but but I, I want to share five. If, 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 if five it's is okay. five is fine. Yeah, five is probably <laughs> it's probably it's sometimes five more than most. So yeah, go for it. <laughs> nice. Uh, okay, so. Uh, that's what I would I would like to call five golden rules. Okay, so the first rule we, we, we all know about it and we all hear about it. Don't invest what you can't afford to lose. 
right? Because if you do, you, 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 will, you will get emotional and make irrational mistakes. So that's rule number one. Rule number two, you have to fix to enter with a 1% risk per trade. So in this case, when we enter with a small portion of your of your account, it, 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 it won't affect your 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 your, your it won't affect your emotions, right? And and trust me, you don't want your emotion to be to be involved in trading. So enter with a one percent risk per trade, and enter with a fixed risk per trade, not fixed stop loss and pips, and not fixed lot size. You you, uh, 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 you have to have all, all the trades should have the same. Uh, the, the same weight or the same effect on, on your account. So 1% equal risk per trade, no matter if you are entering GPUSD, a buy setup on, let's say, uh, let, let's say if you, if the stop loss is 100 pips and you're entering one, uh, and entering on your GPY, the stop loss is, uh, is like 30 pips. If GPUSD 100 pips had stop loss, your JPY uh, uh, at 30 pips at stop loss, you, you, you should lose 1% here and, and 1% here. Okay? So enter with 1% risk per trade. That's rule number two. Uh, rule number three, you, you, you only enter, you know, trading is a, is, a, is a game of probabilities. So we need to have an edge over the market. The first edge is, is by only entering trades when we have at least th- 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 three conferences three things lined up telling us to buy and sell okay so only enter trades when we have three conferences for example as i gave you an example the price is approaching a resistance that's one conference we have a divergence that's a second conference we still need one right we need still need a trend line bro a breakdown a, a double top pattern so only enter with three confluence setups that's your first edge Okay, and, and that's your number, uh, rule number three. The second edge, which is rule number four, is only enter w- with at least one to two risk to reward ratio. So, so, so uh, let's say you, as mentioned before, you enter with 1% risk, you, your target should always be the, uh, the, the double. Okay, so for example, if you have a stop loss of 100 pips, your take profit would be 200 pips, 30 pips, 60 pips target. Uh, rule number five, you have to, to be emotionally stable. So if you are not feeling good, right, if you have an exam, if, if, you, if, if, you, if you're not feeling good in life now, don't trade. You don't have to trade every week, right? So these are the five rules. And, and, and if you don't have the five rules, stay away from trading. If, if you, if you, because if you invest money you can't afford to lose or enter with 10% risk per trade, chances are you will get emotional. Right, and, and and you will not follow your trading plan, and, and and in parallel, even if you invest money you can afford to lose, and enter with one one percent risk per trade, you 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 you, you uh, sorry, you you won't be consistently profitable if you don't have a well defined strategy that gives you an edge of uh, an edge over the market, as mentioned before, uh, through through uh, through three conferences trade and through risk management. So my advice: stay away from trading if you don't have these five rules. Cool. Awesome stuff. Really good. Probably worthwhile going back, listening to that again, guys. Rewind it three or four minutes and take your notes down. It did take me years and years exactly. to work exactly. out. Even the first rule, which was just risk a percentage of your account on every trade. Yes. Uh, I don't know why it took me so long, but anyway. Um, all right. Now, if there was one thing you'd recommend any retail trader spend the next month mastering, what would it be? backtest trading plan and trading journal so if if you already have a trading plan then then focus on it right if not then start working on a trading plan now and try to make it as detailed as possible we all know that a trading plan is not only when you will enter a trade right if price picks this one i will enter a buy it's it's not only that a trading plan should should, should define as mentioned before I, i write notes it should define what's supposed to be done, why, when, and how, right? You have to mm. include every single detail, and not only when price breaks uh, breaks above uh, a resistance. You, you have to be as specific as possible. Like if price breaks it with a big momentum candle, and then the next candle would be also bullish, then I would say that the resistance is broken. And uh, you have to be as specific as possible. 
and it, 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 it should also cover uh, cover your trading personality, time, expectations, and, and, and even risk management rules. So, for example, I enter with 1% risk per trade. For example, my account is, uh, is, is, for example, now 5K, and I will not increase that 1% unless my account is, uh, for, for example, 7K. Okay, so I, I, I will keep enter trades with a fixed with a fixed uh, risk per trade of, of $50, which is a 1% of my account, and I will not increase. For example, if my account now becomes 6, 6K, I will not enter with $60. I will, on, I will, only, I will only increase the 1% when my account goes higher. And of course, you include as many details as possible. For, for, uh, and I'll give you an, uh, one more example. For, for example, as I mentioned in the first uh, when I first when we first started here, that uh, how how many trades would you like to to be holding? For example, as mentioned, I don't enter more uh, more than three trade more than two trades, Euro USD, Euro JPY. So I don't uh, I, I don't enter Euro anymore. So make it as detailed as possible. Uh, because because traders lose in forex because they think or feel. Right, you have to to minimize that as uh, uh, as much as possible. That's why you have to make a very well uh, trading plan. That 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 in every market condition or in every period of time, you know exactly what should be done, and you have to follow your rules, right? So 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 try. Uh, my advice to you is: if you don't have a trading plan, please start making one now. And in thinking on that, so like you're saying, you know, note down every little detail and make sure it's very specific. Yeah. Now, I can imagine, and I've fallen into this trap myself, you know, somebody creating this sort of, you know, quite a big document or whatever, or 10, 12 step, step trading plan, yeah. and then they forget parts of it or they don't refer to it. I mean, how do you, how do you what's your advice to try and embed that trading plan so you know every single part of it? Um, and you and you can you know you're going to stick to it. Nice. Uh, first of all, uh, we have to build a trading plan, and 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 we have to to gain confidence and in, in our self trader, and, and in our in our plan, right? So first of all, you you, you have to backtest, backtest a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. No, no, the, the the more the more you can backtest, the uh, the, the the better you will get. So for example. On GPSD, you, you, you can go back 2017 and backtest, and, and you have 29 pairs. So backtest as many time frames, as many pairs, as uh, as many instruments as possible, because then you 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 you, you will train your brain, and 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 of course you will train your unconscious mind to to, to start to to, to see the, uh, uh, these patterns why they are forming, right? So that's first. Backtest, and of course, when when when, when you are backtesting, uh, of course you you will start tweaking w w with your trading plan, right? Be because of course, if you are backtesting, you will you, for example, you will notice that, that 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 okay, my target is double my stop plus size, but sometimes price will 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 get very close to my target, and 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 then and then it will reverse and and, and hit and and for example, kick me out on break even. Right. So in this example, you will add, you will tweak it in a way that, and you will add rules. You will add rules that if price approaches my, my take profit, which is double stop plus size, and uh, uh, um, uh, and uh, and price forms a, a reversal candlestick pattern, for example, a hammer. Right. So in, in this case, yes, I can I can close my trade, but of course it it it, it should have to be around take profit. Why? Because I don't want to mess. I don't want to mess with with the risk to reward ratio. Mm. So I always would like my winners to, to be at, uh, around double my stop loss. But if I found, find rejection around the take profit, then of course I, I I I can always close my trade. So you you, you will notice that when 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 you are back testing, and of course you, you can add more filters to, to 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 your rules. But once you've added these rules. And you are trading live. You have to follow these rules. Uh, these rules exactly. First of all, because you've already built confidence, right? You've built confidence and that that, that this, this is really working, right? Because you've backtested for like three, four years on many, many pairs. Then you know that yes, we, we may have losses, 
but, but over a series of trades, uh, uh, this strategy is proved to, to make profit, right? So especially that, when you see that in the back test, you, you've had like two, three losses, four losses in a row, you know that this is just this is just a part of the process. And, and when you've had or when you have uh, these, these kind of losses live, Right, you, you you will not you will not get emotional and you will not feel very bad because you will know that the the, the, the winners are coming. So that first, make a make a trading plan and second, uh, to to uh, uh, just like you asked me how to stick to it. First of all, you you've got the confidence that you know that if you stick to it, you will get results. Second, you you uh, it's better to to have it written on on a, on a piece of paper. So based on a piece of paper, and every time you want to enter the trade, you, you have to look at the paper and, and, and you can you have to see, I have this, yes, I have this, yes. Then if, if those conditions are met as per the trading plan, then, then you can enter the trade. Nice, cool. Right, we're gonna jump into the quick fire round here where we find out a little bit more about how you trade and uh, your journey. So how long did it take you to go from newbie to consistently profitable? Uh, from uh, uh, three years. What's your favorite entry setup? What I call the last swing standing break. I will get uh, an example in the video, hopefully. What strategies do you use to exit or manage trades? Um, as mentioned, I, I always I always target double my stop loss size. And of course, if, if an opposite signal is activated, uh, I, 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 I will close the trade manually. And I, and I always move my stop loss to, to break even when 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 it reaches plus one R in profit. So, for example, uh, the one R is a stop loss size, and two R is uh, as uh, uh, double double yes. the stop loss. Yeah, yeah, okay, exactly. Cool. So when when it reaches one R, uh, I will move my stop loss to break even. Uh, what's your recommended trading book or resource? Uh, Nice. Uh, uh, I, I I I recommend for newbies. I recommend to, uh, uh, I recommend to, uh, 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 training in the zone, training training in the zone, and uh, and the 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 this this discipline yes the, the discipline trader. Yep. Uh, yes. By Mark Douglas. That's... Okay. Cool. Uh, yes. Exactly. Mark what's Douglas. your preferred broker and trading platform? Uh, for for broker, I I personally personally use Tickmill and 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 I trade on, on their MT4 platform, uh, and obviously as a charting platform, I I, I use TradingView. And and can I just ask, when you're at the hedge fund, I mean, what broker, what uh, sorry, what platform were they using? Yes, uh, uh, and the hedge fund that I was working for, the, I I was entering trades on on, on MT4 as well, because I I was I was managing. The money of a client that has that has, a, 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 that has a, an MT4 account. Okay, right. So I was entering trades there. Okay. Um, now, what do you want to walk us through your worst ever trade? Yes, it was back when I was in 2012 when I was getting started. Um, I, I was holding a bad trade for, for like two weeks with a very big lot size, and uh, and and I ended up closing it manually uh, with a 70% loss of my entire account if you could leave our listeners with one piece of advice what would it be um, focus on one strategy and stop system hopping so do, do not change your strategy just because you got, you got a series of losses you will have losses so so, so try, try your best to, uh, to, to, to uh, try your best to learn from them and try to improve uh, and tr try to find how to improve and develop your strategy in a way to minimize the loss, uh, the loss and maximize the profit. So, so, so don't jump from one strategy to, to, to another. Focus on one strategy and tweak it in a way to 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 be to, to become a winner. Cool, brilliant. Well, look, that was it. So, um, before we wrap up, what's the best way for the traders to get hold of you? Yes, uh, uh, they, they, they can find me on, on my personal, personal, personal Instagram profile, uh, Rich the Signalist. And f feel free to text me anytime. I would be very happy to help. Cool. And I'm guessing you can probably find you on TradingView as well. Look, a big yes, thank sir, you. Sir. 
to to Richard for sharing with us today. Everything we've discussed here, along with all those links, are going to be in the show notes. To find them, simply search for Richard in the search box on tradingnut.com. Until next time, I wish all my listeners trading happiness and success. So there we have it, folks. Interview with Richard done and dusted. Now, it's not quite finished yet. You want to definitely head over and see this chart walkthrough that he does. It's it's fantastic, right? It is so good. It, there's so much technical analysis in there. He breaks a chart down very simply and very concisely, something that you guys could probably replicate if you take the time to, to learn how he does what he does. Now, guys, uh, also do remember we've got all those live streams coming up on the show. We've got Trader versus Trader. We've got the uh, Forex Simulator Challenge, and I'm trying to get Guest versus Guest kicking off as well this week where I get past guests on the show competing against each other. And if you do want to do your back testing a lot faster, then hit me up. It's uh, Robot Builders Club is where I've got a great community of traders. They're looking to automate what they do, either semi or fully automate their strategies. All right, folks, I'll see you in the next episode or I'll catch you on one of those live streams.